Hello, I'm Rod Lawton and this is a video for Amateur Photographer on five great ways to convert colour images into black and white in Adobe Lightroom. So, let's go! Now I shoot RAW because I often need the extended tonal range and colour depth of RAW files, even for black and white. So here are some different ways of doing this. Number one, just use a preset. This is the easy option. If you want to convert a regular color image to black and white, why not use the off the shelf Lightroom presets? There are plenty to choose from. So just scroll through the options in the presets panel and develop mode. And as you move the mouse pointer over a preset, its effect will be previewed live on your image. This BMW category near the bottom of the list offers a selection of fairly traditional black and white conversions and toning effects. Nothing too extreme. Or this style black and white section further up has some more stylized black and white effects, which include toning and grain. I've even created a set of black and white toning presets for my own use. These appear in a user preset section, which is at the top of the list. This is all fine and very quick, but when you apply a preset, you're also applying a whole bunch of adjustments chosen by its author. And it's not always easy to unravel what it's done and how it works. If you're the sort of person who likes to be in full control of your adjustments with a clear idea of what's being done and why, you might prefer to do your black and white conversions manually. So let's see how to do that. Number two, use the B and W option in the basic panel. Yes, it's that simple. Your image changes from color to black and white and the B and W button stays highlighted to confirm you're in black and white mode. You can just click it again to go back to a color image if you want to. So now your photo is in black and white and there are no other editing adjustments applied yet. You can now go ahead and start. I do have a couple of sneaky tricks I use to save time and hit the ground running. One of these is the auto button, which automatically adjusts the image brightness, contrast, shadows and highlights and more. It also increases the vibrance and saturation, which I find can be a bit much for color images, but in black and white, that doesn't matter. I also like to increase the clarity. With color images, you have to be fairly conservative to keep images looking natural. But in black and white, I often push this right up to the maximum. Black and white thrives on the strong local contrast effects the clarity slider creates. And then there's another bit of Lightroom magic, the dehaze slider. With color images, this can quickly push the color saturation up to unacceptable levels. But in black and white, it's not an issue. And this is a great way to add drama to skies, for example. Number three, browse the different B&W profiles. Now the way the B&W option works is to apply a special Adobe monochrome profile. Profiles change the way the color and tonal data in an image is rendered. And this monochrome profile simply renders different colors as shades of gray. But there isn't just one black and white profile in Lightroom. This is the default, but there are lots more. And you can look through them by opening the profile menu and choosing the browse option. There's a whole section for B&W profiles somewhere down the list. And these are shown as thumbnail previews to show you what your image will look like if you apply them. What's interesting about profiles is that they work independently of presets and image adjustments. You can change the profile you use without disturbing any of your edits. This means you can choose a profile ahead of any manual adjustments or make some adjustments and then see how your image will look with a different profile. Incidentally, Lightroom black and white presets will usually use the Adobe monochrome profile, but you can choose a different profile to see how it looks even after applying a preset. So just remember that profiles and presets work separately and that Lightroom's profiles, which you find in the basic panel, are a great way to try out different black and white conversions. Number four, use the B and W panel color mixing options. Now, something interesting happens if you do swap to B and W mode in the basic panel. The color mixer panel lower down changes to a B and W panel. Now you can start adjusting the strength of different colors and how they convert to shades of gray. In Photoshop, you would use the channel mixer to do this or a black and white adjustment layer. 
and this is where Lightroom offers the same kind of options. So for example, you can make blue skies come out darker, green or red tones come out lighter and so on, just like using traditional black and white filters. You can do this by dragging the sliders, but there's an easier way. If I select the targeted adjustment tool, I can drag downwards on a patch of blue sky to darken it, and upwards on an area of red on the aeroplane's engine cowling to lighten it. Just be aware though that extreme adjustments can produce increased image noise and edge artifacts, especially when darkening blue skies. Number five, selective color with the color mixer and color grading panels. Okay, so far all of these black and white conversions have used black and white profiles in Lightroom, but there's one more method I want to show you which you can use for selective colorization. This is a popular technique in black and white where one color is picked out but the rest are subdued. It can look unnatural and contrived, so it's best to use it sparingly and carefully. So this time I've left my photo in the regular color mode, but in the color mixer panel with the saturation option selected, I dragged all the sliders down to zero. This has effectively desaturated the entire image. Now what I can do is increase the red slider saturation so that I can start to see some color. You can do this with any color, but red can often be the most effective. This does look a little unsubtle, so what I can do now is swap to the color grading panel and add a sepia toning effect so that the hues tie in a little better. I might even add a little blue saturation back in the color mixer panel for a subtle hand colored effect, and maybe head back to the basic panel to add some punchy contrast with the clarity and dehaze sliders. Okay, so there were five great ways to convert color images into black and white in Lightroom. I hope you find one that suits you, the way you work, and how you like your black and white images to look. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.